Welcome back to the Knights Temenos Prime. You have disgraced it. Michael came in with this iconic view, which I just love, where it was locked down and there's this gigantic night ship following behind and there's swirling clouds and, and it's dark over here and it's so thick that the sun doesn't quite cut through it. Amazing lighting and it was just from this piece of still art. And Michael said, do you like that? I said, I love that. Let's, let's go with this idea. So I pitched to him, I said, well, we do that, but what if it, whenever it's flying or moving around, it's sort of, it's so large it has its own weather system. He said, yeah, good, let's do that. We took that as, well, if there's gonna be a lot of atmosphere and, you know, around the night ship, that it should probably fan out into the entire environment. So there's a lot of particulate in the air. There's, you know, uh, a lot, everything's a little more over the top than you would probably expect. Um, you know, these guys are, are basically fighting it out on this just highway in the middle of nowhere on this farmland and, you know, we just kicked up everything we could think of. The trouble with loyalty to a cause is that the cause will always betray you. And the night ship uh, in the original plan was supposed to be probably a couple of thousand feet long and nearly a thousand feet wide, so it's huge. Well, once again, we're faced with one simple thing. How do you tell scale from something like that? And one way to do that is to have small pieces that look like they could you know, be something that we can relate to as humans that, that assemble this thing. So whenever you get in close, you can see all these hundreds and hundreds of pieces on the outside where it was assembled. And some of the uh, inspiration that we got for the ship, especially for what we call the prawns or the big arms that stick up in the air, were from sailboat rigging. And so we tried to put lots and lots of ribbing in there, far more than a real sailboat would have. And all the complexity of all the pipes and all the different supports in there, and even if you look closely, there's cabling and so forth, mimicking a little bit what a sailing ship would have. That's the outside. And the outside was plenty complicated, but now we go in the inside. One idea was to always have curves here and there, have uh, conduits and piping, so it wasn't just big, right angles locked together like you'd see in a skyscraper. That, that was not the idea. It's supposed to be very organic, like maybe some creature style of a thing. But now, how do you build the inside to make it make sense? My caution to Michael all along was, well, don't put too many pieces in because on a computer graphics side of things, the more pieces or geometries that you have, polygons and what, all these, all these things have to, have to be created. The computer has to track all these things. It has to know where they are at a given moment. They all have to look good. Well, the more you have, you can actually stop the system. Singapore did um, some of the first shots that take place um, when the Autobots first arrive on the night ship. And Michael really wanted this ship to feel different, so uh, it, it ended up being much more, having like large openings of, um, in the sides of the ship that sunlight could stream in with lots of uh, atmospheric effects, light shafts, and um, uh, a very, very different look from the way the interiors looked in previous movies. Lockdown ship has booby traps, eyes open. Beware of his bone grinders, brain blinders, flesh peelers, chromosomal inverters, catatonic sludge, black hole trapdoors, and of course radiation. 